Ladies and gentlemen, I am Judith DeYoung, Associate Dean and Associate Professor of Architecture. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2017 commencement of the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts of the University of Illinois at Chicago. This evening's music is provided by the UIC Wind Ensemble under the direction of Jose O. Riojas. At this time, I present to you officers and administration of the University of Illinois at Chicago and the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts, our distinguished guest, and the faculty of the college. Please be seated. This ceremony marks the end of your time as UIC students and the first day as a UIC alumni. I'm excited to welcome you to the UIC alumni community. I encourage you to stay connected with your fellow classmates, your instructors, and to this great network of CATA alumni who continually reach extraordinary achievements. The program has additional information on college resources available. Welcome and congratulations. The UIC Symphonic Choir, conducted by Michael Anderson, will begin with a selection by Darman Meter, Love Psalm. Following this piece, please rise and join the choir in singing one stanza of the Star-Spangled Banner, which can be found on the last page of your program. 
And before we begin, to assure that everyone enjoys this meaningful event, would you please take a moment now to turn off or mute all cell phones and other electronic devices that may detract from the enjoyment of all. Thank you. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, graduates, and their families, faculty and staff, alumni and friends, on behalf of the faculty and staff in the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts, I am so pleased to welcome all of you to our 2017 commencement ceremonies. Most especially, welcome and congratulations to our graduates. This is your day. Through your amazing talent, hard work, extraordinary creative visions, and perhaps most of all, perseverance, you have earned this day of celebration and reflection. As we celebrate this day with you, we honor you not only for your achievements and your promise, but also for the many ways in which you leave UIC a better institution than you found it. Just as you have grown by pursuing innovative research, scholarship, 
performance, design, and artistic practice, we too have become a stronger community as a result. You have enriched us, and we are grateful for your contribution to this superb and growing legacy that is UIC. As faculty members, it has been our honor to teach you and to learn from you and to help guide you in your many paths toward your creative discovery. As you have probably already observed, and if I might humbly say, UIC has one of the finest and most adventuresome creative arts and design faculty in the nation. Hopefully you have been able to absorb much of their intense commitment and passion during the past few years. And I hope UIC has forever expanded the horizons and possibilities you imagine in your future lives. Creative thinking is built upon a vivid imagination, and courageous innovation requires a willingness to take risks. Your com successful completion of a degree from the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts is a strong affirmation that you are a fearless and possess the, the requisite dedication and drive for unlimited success. You have chosen to immerse yourself in a college curriculum designed to foster and unleash your maximum creative potential. You chose wisely, by the way. Unleash it to be a way of living as well as a way of doing. Imagine a way of living that is productive, hopeful, but also compassionate, an important responsibility we all share. I cannot express how excited we all are to celebrate your accomplishment today. Come back and see us, and when you do, share us your many journeys, both the challenging ones as well as the thrilling ones. We will always be delighted to see you again. The college and university that you are now graduating from has an exciting future ahead, and you will always be an important and welcome part of that future. But for now, on behalf of the faculty and staff in the college, I sincerely and heartfelt congratulations to our graduates and to all the family and friends who have provided critical support in your stunning accomplishment. Thanks to everyone in this room. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce the senior university administrators who have joined us today. First is Barbara Wilson, who is the Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University of Illinois System. Dr. Wilson works closely with the Chancellor and the Provost of all three University of Illinois uh, institutions in defining and shaping the strategic academic priorities. Previously, Dr. Wilson served as Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and Interim Chancellor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. She received her PhD in Communication Arts from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Her research has involved issues involving social and psychological effects of media on, on children. Please join me in welcoming Vice President Wilson. Also with us on the platform today is Susan Poser, Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Susan Poser became the Provost and Vice Chancellor at the University of Illinois Chicago in February 2016. She, an honors, she is an honors graduate at Swarthmore College, where she majored in ancient Greek and political science, and she has a law degree and a PhD from the University of California, Berkeley. Prior to coming to UIC, Dr. Poser was the Dean of University of Nebraska College of Law, where she was also a faculty member. Prior to becoming Dean, she served for three years as Chief of Staff and Associate to the Chancellor at the University of Nebraska. Her scholarly work is primarily in the areas of legal ethics and tort law. Please welcome me and joining, uh, joining me in welcoming Provost Poser. And finally, I have the distinct honor of introducing Michael Amaritis, who is Chancellor of the University of Illinois at Chicago. Michael Amaritis became the ninth Chancellor at the University on March 16, 2015. His priorities for the university include a strengthened focus on our student experience, a stronger engagement with Chicago's business community and nonprofit organizations, greater efforts to showcase UIC's research portfolio, and the development of a new, more entrepreneurial operating model for the university. Will you please welcome Chancellor Michael Amaritis. Thank you, Dean Everett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University of Illinois at Chicago Spring Commencement Ceremonies. And I use ceremonies in the plural. I know you care about this ceremony, but we had 13 of them within the last 72 hours. So you can imagine, by Monday, when I walk into my office, I want the winds ensemble to be playing pomp and circumstance for me. I'm used to it. Otherwise, I will have a withdrawal syndrome. We have a great class of 2017 to present to you this evening from the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts, what we call 
very affectionately here, CADA. It's a great CADA class. At least that's what I'm told. Because I have to tell you, watching the reactions from the audience tonight as we started, I started having some doubts. You see, I expected that since you know these students better than I do, if this is indeed such a great class, you would clap more loudly, you would cheer more loudly, you would shout more loudly. In other words, you would demonstrate much more intense emotions. So, unless you think they're just so-and-so, I want to give you an opportunity to prove me wrong. As I say, congratulations, class of 2017. I think this is a slight improvement. We still have to work on this during the course of, of the evening. I would like to thank the families who are here, the family members who are here, the mothers, the fathers, the, the sisters, the brothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, spouses, partners, children, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, neighbors, friends, whoever you are. I want to thank you for being here to celebrate with us. But more importantly, I want to thank you for all the support that you have provided to our students during their journey at UAC. And of course, I want to thank your professors, your teachers, your mentors, your advisors, as well as the staff of CADA, the people who pushed you when it seemed you couldn't take one more step and help you stand up and face the challenges, the people who sit right behind me and some of them are around you. So please join me in thanking the faculty and staff of your college. So I guess by now you have figured it out. This is it. You made it. You are here together with your classmates, your friends and teammates, the people that supported you during this period, the people that you worked together with. You shared projects and notes. And I keep saying this every year, hopefully not during exam time. And also the people that kept each other awake during all night studies. And sometimes you kept each other awake in one or two classes, I think. And I hope that you have plans for a great party tonight. When we will done, the night will still be young. There is time to do that. So take the evening off tonight. But please remember that the rest of your life starts at 7 a.m. sharp tomorrow morning. And I mean it when I say tomorrow morning, because as I look at all of you today, besides a lot of big smiles that I see in you, I see in front of me the millennial generation grown up and ready to take the world in new directions. And my hope is that this will start tomorrow morning because we need to move in new directions. And I know we may have some pre-millennials or post-millennials among you. It depends on how it counts. So how about if I call you the internet generation in general? Because you were born and grew up with the internet and all of its technological side effects really playing a significant role in nearly every aspect of your lives. You are the most technologically driven generation in history, and you are connected in ways impossible to have imagined even a generation ago. Let's consider these facts. And at UAC, we deal with real facts. We don't deal with alternative facts, right? <laughs> you have the highest average number of Facebook friends in history. I have three of them, and they're all members of my family. 60% <laughs> of you, of the millennials, are regularly posting selfies. I think if you look at my generation, there are around 20 or 30 people that regularly post selfies in the entire world, and we are looking for them because they need help. <laughs> you send an average of 50 text messages a day. I mean, really? 50 text messages a day? I'm wondering what you have to discuss in all of them. And I'm not even going to go down the road of Twitter. In fact, I wish some older people would stop tweeting about serious businesses in the middle of the night. I'm just referring to a friend of mine, by the way. Don't <laughs> Joking aside, what is important is that you are just readily 
to new technology programs, to new systems and devices, and you perform computer-based tasks more quickly than anyone over the age of 40. And although some believe that multitasking is not the most effective way to work, you guys are proving them wrong. And your comfort with social media means that you are very good at promoting your skills and making connections both at the personal and the professional level using technology to overcome traditional barriers. But my hope in you is not placed on your technological skills alone. More importantly, I believe that you are the most optimistic generation that we have seen in decades. You see a world of possibilities and you are not stuck on labels. In fact, statistics show that in the United States, 50% of the millennials consider themselves politically unaffiliated, not inactive, not apolitical, but politically unaffiliated, which means that you're open-minded and you don't like to be caged into a specific agenda of one party. You have a healthy skepticism and you're not afraid to ask questions. And where the baby boomers were famous for saying, don't trust anyone over the age of 30, your skepticism is not rooted in age, it is rather rooted in knowledge and ability. By the way, 20% of your generation have at least one immigrant in their immediate household. Multiply this by three or four to get the statistic for Chicago. You can imagine what Chicago statistics look like. And as the most ethnically diverse generation, millennials are more accepting of differences. And your inclusion of members of other races, other religions, other, ra other gender groups, other sexual orientation groups, means that you support now and you will continue to support in the future institutions and laws that promote social and economic equality. So when I add all of this up, what I see in front of me tonight is the most diverse generation in our history, is the most technologically connected generation in our history, and one of the most passionate about the values of equality and justice. This is why I'm optimistic. And here is your challenge the enlightened and inclusive views that define your sense of right or wrong will only progress if you make your voices heard and if you make your actions felt. Your generation has proven by now that you can rally behind important causes, and I hope that civic engagement becomes your hallmark. And civic engagement, by the way, does not end at the polls every two or four years. Civic engagement means working to make a difference in the life of our communities and developing the combination of knowledge, skills, values, and motivation to make this difference a reality. Civic engagement means promoting the quality of life through both political and non-political processes. It means building, revitalizing, and investing in communities. It means listening to all voices and frequently speaking for those who have been silenced through the political process. And I'm confident, I'm confident that with your university education and your own values and principles, you are by now ready to put yourselves at the forefront of our future. This is, after all, the legacy and the history of USC graduates. I hope you will start doing this at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. On behalf of the University of Illinois at Chicago, I promise you that we will always be your university and we will continue to support you. Like you, UIC will continue to grow in strength and reputation, enhancing in the process the value of your degrees. We will make you proud the same way that you made us proud during your stay here and during your graduation tonight. You see, at the end, the greatness of a university is in big part the sum of its alumni, and tonight you are becoming part of this equation. And please remember, to share your future accomplishments, come back and visit your faculty members, and come back and mentor the students who follow in your footsteps. Go out there and tell the world about your accomplishments, and go out there and tell the world about UIC. You are now our best ambassadors. Congratulations, class of 2017, and Godspeed. Thank you, Chancellor Ambridis. I would now like to introduce Alyssa Greenberg, candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy in Art History, who will present the Silver Circle Award.
Great teachers are the heart of a great university. The University of Illinois at Chicago annually recognizes and honors its great teachers. Recipients of the Silver Circle Award for Excellence in Teaching are selected by our students. I would like to recognize Alexander Eisenschmidt, Assistant Professor in the School of Architecture, as the recipient of the 2017 Silver Circle Award for Excellence in Teaching. All right. There you go. Thank you very much. With this award, the students of UIC honor those who have taught them with distinction in the many forms of our university. I am honored to present you with the Silver Circle Award. Thank you, Alyssa. It is now my privilege and pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Kevin Koval. Kevin Koval is the founder of Louder Than a Bomb, the largest youth poetry slam in the world. The annual event hosts over 1,000 youth poets for a month of Olympic-style poetry bouts, workshops, and special events. Kevin is also the artistic director of Young Chicago Authors, which transforms the lives of people, young people by cultivating their voices through writing, publication, and performance education. YCA exposes young people to thoughtful writing about hip hop and teaches them how to create their own authentic narratives through a variety of arts education programs, both in and outside the classroom. These programs include free education partnerships for, for Chicago schools, free weekly writing workshops, and open mics for young poets, journalists, and MCs. In Chicago, there is a consistent need for a space dedicated to the voices of young people who face the challenges, often of violence and segregation every day. A safe place that provides a platform for youth expression and celebrates the narratives of teens from every neighborhood in the city. These YCA programs that Kevin directs provides a vibrant literary and artistic community for Chicago youth that transcends cultural and socioeconomic boundaries. Kevin's own writings and poetry provide a vivid and imaginative chronological panorama. He writes about events such as the 1893 Columbian Exhibition, the 1915 Eastland disaster, the 2016 Cubs World Series. He tells stories about important Chicago icons, such as Jean-Baptiste Pont du Sable, the, the supposed founder of Chicago, the first woman Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Jane Addams, the first African-American poet to win a Pulitzer Prize, Gwendolyn Brooks, blues legend Muddy Waters, the first African-American mayor of Chicago, Harold Washington, and Pulitzer Prize winning author Studs Terkel, who before his death in 2008, called Koval a new glowing voice in the world of literature. In his voice is our hope for a new world of peace, grace, and beauty. If you were watching TV last week, you may have seen Kevin being interviewed by Trevor Noah on The Daily Show on the 8th, April 26th. I suggest you take a look at YouTube. It's still available. You can look at his interview on that. It, he was talking about his new book, A People's History of Chicago. Please join me in welcoming my good friend, Kevin Koval. All right. Chancellor Amaritis. Provost Poser, Vice President Wilson, Associate Dean Yunker, Dean Everett, members of the faculty, graduates, and honored guests. I want to thank you all for having me. I particularly want to thank uh, Dean Everett, who is uh, evidently now my PR agent, which I really appreciate. Um, that's a good look. I also want to thank Dr. Lisa Lee, my closest colleague, intellectual accomplice, and dear friend. I want to thank my colleagues, co-teachers, and all of my students here at UIC around the world, and particularly all my students around the city of Chicago. And most importantly, I want to say, what up, class of 2017? How y'all feel? You guys good? Yeah? It's good to see y'all. I'm honored to be asked to teach here and speak here today. Low key, I thought I was going to get an honorary degree for my presence. You know, like a doctorate for rocking it. But nonetheless, I'm really pleased to be here. I love UIC, because it looks like the city, the students, span the Chicagoland spectrum. Y'all sound, feel, talk like this city, the most beautiful and brutal city in the world. For real, I feel that way. Being a Chicagoan is a kind of gifted plague, though, 
Nelson Algren said, loving Chicago is like loving a woman with a broken nose. You may well find lovelier lovelies, but never of lovely so real. Common on his classic verse on Black Star's respiration said, my circumstances between Cabrini and Love Jones, surrounded by hate, yet I love home. And I love home. I'm a Chicago centrist. I think we made everything that's fresh, air, kinda, water for the most part, but Chicago is the home of house, a culture Frankie Knuckles and Ron Hardy and other young black and Latinx queer men carving a safe space for themselves on the dance floor. And as our good friend Boogie McLaren says, eventually they invited everybody to the party and practiced house's notion of radical inclusivity. This is the house that called black folk north during the Great Migration where Muddy Waters moved from the Delta to plug in his guitar and shoot out fire. This is the city where blues jumped. This is the home of the greatest writers to ever pick up a pen. Miss Gwendolyn Brooks to no name. The realest of storytellers, Ana Castillo and Sandra Cisneros. This is where Richard Wright wrote, where Sun Ra improvised and weirded a black future. It's home to Pilsen's many Mexican muralists, Salvador Jimenez, Jose Guerrero, Jeff Maldonado, to name a few. It's home of the black woodcuts of Dr. Margaret Burroughs, the working class portraits she tributed to people left out of the white museum space that gave way to the rise of the DuSable Museum of African American History. The first of its kind right here in Chicago. Chicago is home to a litany of creative innovators, historically and especially now. This right now is probably the most exciting time to live in Chicago. We're in the midst of a cultural renaissance because of the genius of young people, 14 to 27, who are utilizing and innovating democratized forms of technology to create local and international megaphones to once again transform the way the planet hears and gets down and sees and seizes the moment and movement in the future. This is the home now of Krista Franklin and Amanda Williams, Hebrew Brantley, Miguel Aguilar, the home of Chance, Saba, Mick Jenkins, and thousands of louder than a bomb poets and artists who are using their words and art to speak for themselves and for a city with too many muckrakers and carpetbaggers, too many mainstream media outlets and presidents calling us something other than our name. Studs Terkel wrote, of the condition of loving such a beautifully resilient, ingenuitive, and flawed city, he spoke of Chicago's Janice Head. You look one way, there is triumph. You look another way, there is terror. And the way it's going, the way it's been going, has me worried, has me wondering whose city is it for real. The signs of construction read, building a new Chicago, and I sometimes wonder, who they mean and envision by that. Perhaps a city of the new, for the few, a city of two and of the one percent. But I think we can think differently. I think that the city is actually ours, the workers. It's our public space, school, it's our city. The folks who third shift and drive Ubers, the folks who got pushed to Harvey, who are hanging on in Little Village. This is our city. We are a city of survivors, of the fire and being fired and being fired upon. We are a Sisyphean in our pursuit of justice and the construction of a fair and fairer city. And if it burns down, if it breaks or fails or falls, we have the ingenuity and will and know-how to build it back up our lives in city again. In Chicago, we learn how to take the L, and we learn how to take an L, to travel all across this flat, segregated space. We run the body of the lake, the hundreds to Howard. We go all city, and also we learn how to take a loss, an L, in step, because this is not going to be easy taking back our city, shifting our values from valuing value and capital to what is our most valuable resource, the radical imagination of everyday people, of young people. This is our task, to harness our imagination 
individually and collectively, and unfurl it into the civic space. Where there are viaducts, see bridges. Where there are empty walls, make a public gallery. Where there is segregation, create a space safe where organized micro-communities could come together to listen and build with one another. The emergent creative cultural class will and must challenge the normative center. This is us. This is y'all. And this is our job. We have to arm ourselves in this war but not with the weaponry of destruction, with the tools of imagination. This is our city to mold and make better and fresher and more just for ourselves, for our families, for our communities and those we do not know. So in the name of those who came before, in the name of Jane Addams and Ida B. Wells, in the name of Lucy and Albert Parsons, in the name of Rudy Lozano, Jean-Baptiste Dussable, Fred Hampton, in the name of the indigenous folks before all of us, and in the name of George Koval, my grandfather, who fled the Ukraine because Cossacks were coming to kill him because of his religion and culture, but Chicago was his sanctuary, this home saved him as it has saved me, and it is our duty to make a sanctuary for all here and for all who will come, for this to be safe in a saved city where everybody could get up and get down and get back up in the morning and radically reimagine a more just and equitable future for all, for real, for real. Stay here, y'all. Create the city anew. Make it more and more, and again, this is our city, this is y'all's. I look forward to building it with you. Thank you. The voice of the city, Kevin Koval. Thank you, Kevin. Now I have the pleasure of introducing our 2017 student speaker for the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts commencement, Alyssa Greenberg, a candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy in Art History. Ms. Greenberg received a BA from Oberlin College in 2009 and an MA from the Bard Graduate Center in 2011. Originally from Brooklyn, Alyssa enrolled in the Department of Art History at UIC in 2011 and received the University Fellowship in 2014 and the Dean's Scholar Award in 2015. Her research interests include museum pedagogy and the museum as a site of activism. Most recently, she was a graduate assistant at the UIC Dialogue Initiative. From 2011 to 14, she worked as an education assistant at the Jane Addams Hull House Museum here on the, at the university. Alyssa is an active member of UIC's Art History Graduate Student Association and the UIC Graduate Employees Organization. Her professional affiliations include the Art 21 Educators Program, Publicly Active Graduate Education Fellowship of Imagining America, and the Humanities Without Walls Consortium. She currently serves on the Leadership Committee for Chicago Emerging Museum Professionals and is a founding member of Museum Workers Speak. After graduation, she will continue to pursue social justice within the museum field through cultivating dialogue and community engagement. Please help me welcome Alyssa Greenberg. Chancellor Emeritus, Provost Poser, Vice President Wilson, Associate Dean, Yo Dean Yunker, Dean Everett, members of the faculty, graduates, and honored guests. This evening, I'd like to talk about two concepts, work and value. As we prepare to enter the next phase of our professional or academic lives, we face an unprecedented set of challenges. We face challenges to the value of the work we do, with the Trump administration's recent threat to eliminate funding for the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the social value of the arts and humanities is being called into question by our own government. We face challenges related to the economic value of an arts education. Some of you will make sacrifices to pursue the work you've been trained for here at UIC. That requires conviction and courage, 
but it also requires privilege. And others in this room with families to support or student debt to pay might not have that privilege. We also face challenges to the very status of our work as work, as creative and intellectual labor. Unpaid internships and the contingent labor have become normalized in the arts and humanities. Too often, we're expected to work for free or accept substandard wages in order to do what we love. This line of thinking would have us believe that there is a zero-sum trade-off between work that creates economic value and work that creates social or aesthetic value. So what is the value of a degree in the arts or humanities? To be sure, your degree can be parlayed into gainful employment outside of the art world. Companies like Google are going out of their way to seek out the creativity and critical thinking skills that arts and humanities educations provide. But while you may be more employable than you think, that's not what I'm here today to tell you. I'm here to tell you that your degree is valuable not in spite of the challenges we face, but because of them. Studying the arts provides us with the critical tools to think creatively about why our society is the way it is and to imagine alternatives. The arts prepare us to see our world not as a given, but as something made and something that can be remade. In your life after UIC, activate the critical lens you develop during your studies. Whether you're an artist or an art historian, one of your most important skill sets is your critical eye. How can you use your art or critical presence to create the world you want to create? In part, that means applying a critical eye to the institutions you participate in. Remember that social justice and diversity and inclusion have become buzzwords, a brand. Are your institutions and their leadership taking actions that match their stated commitments? Even so-called spaces and institutions of social justice can perpetuate injustice, the very forces they claim to be against. That also means applying a critical eye to your own life. You should absolutely ask yourself if your work aligns with your values. But in addition to considering your values, consider your value. The idea that you must suffer to do what you love, that zero-sum trade-off between economic and social or aesthetic value, is not an immutable truth but the product of a particular order of things that has been made and can be remade. Strive to do work that aligns with your values, but do not let it come at the expense of your value as a worker. Academics and arts professionals are often hesitant to self-identify as workers, preferring to see their creative or intellectual practice something that is somehow separate from work. But when you make art, intern for an art museum, create a logo, organize an event, meet for coffee with someone in your field who wants to pick your brain, all of that is labor. Some of it is waged, some of it is unwaged, but all of it is labor. Don't succumb to the pressure to work for free. If you work for free, it devalues your own work as well as that of your peers. Don't get exploited. If you're in the privileged position of being a member of a labor union, be an active member. Even if you're not a union member, you can follow in the model of the Fight for 15 or the Chicago Coalition of Household Workers and collectively organize for better working conditions without the structure of an official union. Labor is one of the last major taboos in the art world, and I encourage you as arts workers to intervene in that. We must fight for justice and not take for granted what we have. It's our responsibility to create the field that we want to work in. Thank you, Alyssa. I will ask Provost Poser to please join me in honoring students with special recognition. With great honor, I bring to your attention those students who have demonstrated exceptional academic achievement. 
those graduating with university honors, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude, as indicated by their gold, silver, and bronze cords. Those graduating with college honors, those receiving departmental distinction, high distinction, and highest distinction. Those who have been members of the honors college designated by the gold stoles they wear. The PAP scholars designated by their red cords. Honor students, I would like all of you to please rise to be recognized and remain standing. Provost Poser, I present to you the graduating seniors who have received honors. They may bring credit to themselves, to their families, and to the University of Illinois at Chicago. Thank you, Dean Everett. It is indeed a pleasure to recognize these honors recipients who have enriched our entire academic community. Achieving these levels of distinct distinction is truly remarkable. We are proud of you and congratulate you for the distinctions and honors that you have earned. Again, congratulations. Graduates, you may be seated. <clears throat> Chancellor Emeritus, will you please join me as we present the candidates for a degree? It is my pleasure to introduce Laura Lee Junker, Associate Dean of the Graduate College, who will present the candidates for the graduate degrees in the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts. I have the honor to present the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Art History. I ask that Alyssa Greenberg please stand up and come forward. Associate Professor Therese Kroon, her research advisor will present the hood that symbolizes her new academic status. Chancellor Emeritus, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present Alyssa Greenberg for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Art History. Her dissertation title is Arts Awareness at the Metropolitan Museum of Art Art Museum Education as Artistic and Political Practice. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the Doctor of Philosophy degree for which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. Congratulations, Dr. Greenberg. Chancellor Emeritus, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Master of Architecture, Master of Arts, Master of Design, Master of Fine Arts, and Master of Science. Candidates, please rise. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the master's degree for which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. Congratulations to all of you. For the Master of Architecture, Michael D'Souza. Catlin Farron, second degree Masters of Arts in Design Criticism. Yvonne Hinau. Andrew Jennings, recipient of the American Institute of Architects Henry Adams Certificate of Merit. John Lee Ano, Master of Architecture.
Andrew Mateja. Jacob McLaughlin. Spencer McNeil, recipient of the Alpha Rho Chai, Chai Medal of Merit. Eugene Murphy, Master of Architecture. Alnaz Rafati. Samantha Rikas. Sarah Rosman, recipient of the American Institute of Architects Henry Adams Medal of Merit. Juan Suarez. Yu Ping Sun. <laughs> Wukash Voynich. <laughs> Timothy Wong. Caitlin Woodward. Yana Yaboa. For the Master of Science in Architecture, Paulina Santoya Garcia. For the Master of Fine Arts, Jose Luis Benavides. <laughs> Caleb Foss. Lorenzo Gatorna. <laughs> Zachary Hutchinson. <laughs> William Joyce. Nelly Clues. Michael Lopez. Elizabeth McCarthy. Roni Packer. <laughs> For the Master of Arts in Art History, Sineha 
Ibrahimova, For the Masters of Arts in Museum and Exhibition Studies, Melissa Burnett. Amanda Coleman. Rachel Giannini. Sarah Maritza Hernandez, recipient of the Muse Social Justice Award. <laughs> Jessica Jackson Brown. <laughs> Elizabeth Lally. Lauren Leving. <laughs> Devin Malone. <laughs> Sarah Padilla. Esther Ramirez. <laughs> Evelyn Young. <laughs> Whitney Skullall. For the Master of Design, He Sung Kim. <laughs> Tong Ching Gao. Bayro Hey <laughs> Reina Kumar <laughs> Jerome Grand Jury Salamet Congratulations to our new doctor and master's graduates. Associate Dean Millie Crespo will present the candidates for the undergraduate degrees in the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts. Chancellor Amaritis, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science. Candidates, please rise.
Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree for which you have been recommended and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations, class of 2017. Will the new bachelor's graduates please come upon the platform to be recognized by the chancellor, provost, dean, and directors. For the Bachelor of Arts in Architectural Studies, Destiny Cassano, Patrick Daly, Christopher Fellman, Alyssa Freistack, Nicole Murray, Timothy O'Brien, Coleman Rootstein, Hafsa Samin, Jose Tafoya, Rafael Victoria. For the Bachelor of Science in Architecture, Jorge Alvarado, Sue Mayat Aon, Elizabeth Batista. Michal Bolas, Richard Bosworth, Alejandra Cardenas, Pedro Cerda, Jesus Cruz, Caitlin Didominicis, Kelly Dixon, Kaylin Doyle, Selden Farrado, Roberto Gomez, Miriam Garcia, Joseph Garrity, Caroline Grebner, Maria Gunawan, Beatrice Guzman, Daniel Guzman, Henry He, Andrea Hunt, Marcus Hutton, Maha Ibrahim, Maria Jabri, Mirveta Kantarevic, Camille Kapika, Chi Ching Li, William Lyons, Jorge Mayoga, Pedro Medrano, Vincent Medrano, Edward Mendoza, Ruta Misunas. Alvaro Munoz, Mark Pankowitz, Jessica Pina, Justina Piwa Warchik, Samra Kasim, oh, recipient of the Alpha Road Kai Medal of Merit, Megan Quigley. Victor Reyes, Aisha Reyes, Henry Ringleber, Jennifer Santos, 
Nicholas Garada, Shalab Shah, Isabella Shalong, Holly Tack, Hannah Winders, David Zajeski, Michael Zimmer. Congratulations. For the Bachelor of Fine Arts in Art, Nadine Abdelrahim, recipient of the Art Award. Ariel Acevedo, recipient of the Art Award. Oscar Chavez, recipient of the Art Award. Adam Sipsik, recipient of the Art Award. <laughs> Ermelin Dahl. David Guerrero. Nicole Gushhurst. Hannah Humphrey, Sabrina Hunt, Lauren Jones, Finn Mancini, Yannette Nunez. Stephanie Pierce, Marisol Ramirez, Brenda Roman, Sherry Stewart, Matthew Trotz, Crystal Yee. Rosario Zavella. For the Bachelor of Arts in Art History, Evangelia Maria Aninos. The recipient of the John McNee Award. Abigail Atwood, Ferial Chudri, Mariela Espinosa Leon, Graham File, recipient of the John McNee Award, Monica Ramos. Catherine Zepka, <laughs> Miao Wang, <laughs> Brian Williams, For the Bachelor of Big D Design, Carolina Aletres, Daniel Aceo, Lauren Bach, Jordan Bailey, Sharon Bamberger. Ariel Benick, recipient of College Honors and Departmental Distinction. Danielle Brinkman. Esteban Christmas. 
Austin Curry. Kyle Dalton. Christina Diaz. Alexander Dumstorff. Justin Durkin. Catherine Edwards, recipient of the James Axman Memorial Award for Graphic Design. Feng Zhao Yong, Sky. Nicole Galvin. Ricardo Garcia. Marcel Griffith. Jacqueline Guadakira. Brennan Gudmundson, IDSA Merit Award winner. Christian Herrera. Nabiha Hussein, recipient of the UIC School of Design Project Osmosis Award. Sebastian Iniguez. Nikolai Yarmiov. Edmund Karbog. Brandon Kearns. Julia Kayrick, Joel Levinson, recipient of the School Faculty Prize for Industrial Design, Christine Lee, recipient of the UIC School of Design Project Osmosis Award, Tiffany Lin, Amitai, The Truth Low. Jera Louie, <laughs> Leah Lowenstein, Alexander Mark, Alyssa Matsumoto, Jessica Miller, Diana Daniela Mascovici, Hayen Park. Jose Perales, and Fan, Michael Regan, Marco Rios, Vanessa Rodriguez Esparza, Isabel Saget. Jason Sage, Amanda Sanchez, Adam Schaefer, Philip Sidorowitz, Teresa Cernick, Carl Stiefelmeyer, Jonathan Strong, Cassandra Serdik, Rachel Tanasi, Jason Vaccarello, recipient of the School Faculty Prize for Industrial Design, Elizabeth Villarreal, Charles Walsh, Lauren Wood, Megan Wood, Lucas Warwag, Ashley Young, Alonzo Zamaron, for the Bachelor of Arts in Music. 
Colleen Glacia. Alexander Kruger, the recipient of the Joy and Bob Harnack Award. Claire Lipina. Kaylee Tchaikovsky. Jose Zamora. For the Bachelor of Music, uh, Jamal Crowder, recipient of the Thank you, fan club. <laughs> He's a recipient of the Joy and Bob Harnack Award. Catherine Foreman, the recipient of the Louis Frank Scholarship in Piano. Erendia Isguera. Joseph Sajak. All right, for the Bachelor of Arts in Acting. Kiera Bouton. <laughs> Bianca Corral. <laughs> Candice Hudnell. Candace also has a second degree of Bachelor of Arts in Theater Design. <laughs> Stephanie Iverson. <laughs> Danielle Malinock, recipient of the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts Scholarship. Jacqueline McNaughton. Sophia Menendian. Danny Mulay. Elliot Simmons. Anthony Valentine. And now for the Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Fine Art, no. Bachelor of Arts in Theater and Performance. Sheila Ferguson, re recipient of the College of Architecture, Design, and the Arts Scholarship. For the Bachelor of Arts in Theater Design. Savannah Clements. The recipient of the Chicago Bar Association Theater and Christian and Olin Larson Scholarship. Jennifer Jacoby, recipient of the Christian and Olin Larson Scholarship. Brianna Young. And now for the Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting. Jordan Arredondo, recipient of the USC Theater and Music Scholarship Fund. Nicholas Barelli. Leah Casey. Recipient of the Trudy Abarbanel Scholarship Fund. Emily Dixon. Andrew Perez. Steph Vondell. Erica Martinez. Congratulations to the new bachelor's graduates.
Thank you all. I would like to recognize and to give special thanks now to the members of the UIC Wind Ensemble and UIC Symphonic Choir for their incredible addition to this commencement celebration. I'd also like to, to acknowledge the staff of the college for their efforts in organizing this celebration and for their work with the graduating class of 2017. One final recognition remains. Parents, spouses, and partners of our graduates, please rise and again accept our thanks and congratulations. <clears throat> Now, will the children, siblings, grandparents, and other family and friends please also rise and accept our thanks. <laughs> now, with the UIC faculty, Administrators and graduates, please rise so that we may give all of you a final standing ovation congratulating you on this wonderful accomplishment. Thank you all. You've made it. This concludes Commencement 2017. After the platform party and faculty have completed their recessional march, graduates will exit through the door behind the stage. Family members and guests, please meet your graduates outside. Banner carriers, please come forward to retrieve your banners. Thank you all once again.